Hey everyone, Dave here from Go Prospecting. I listened to your comments and you guys really liked the video I did on uh, meteorite properties. So I went to the Calgary Rock and Gem Show and picked up a few more samples so we can check that out. So in this video, I'll do the same thing. I'll weigh each sample. I'll see if it's magnetic. I'll do a continuity test. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we'll start with this one. This is a stony iron meteorite. It was found in the African Sahara Desert near Morocco along the Algerian border. So this meteorite features what is called a fusion crust. A fusion crust is what's formed when the meteorite comes through the atmosphere at an incredible speed. Heat is built up. It usually forms black, but in this case it's red. This meteorite sample is a crondite. It's the most common meteorite found. It's made up of three-quarter silicone and one-quarter nickel iron alloy. There's trace amounts of iron sulfides in it as well. Okay, let's see what the weight is of this sample and it comes in at 7.97 grams. Okay, I'll just put the magnet near the sample. So it's got a slight magnetic pull to it, but not enough to lift it off the ground. So that's this meteorite being composed of mostly silicone and one quarter nickel iron, probably not even that much. Okay, so now we're going to test the conductivity of each sample. We'll use a multimeter for this test. I have it set for continuity, and when the two leads touch, they make a sound. And when we touch it to the sample, nothing. So it's not very conductive. Okay, let's move on to the next meteorite sample I have here. Uh, this one here is an iron nickel meteorite. It fell on the Sikote Alin mountain range located in southeast Russia. It was witnessed by locals February 12th, 1030 AM, 1947. So witnesses uh, reported that when this fell, it was said to be a large bull-eyed meteor and it was brighter than the sun when it flew through the sky. Many fragments were recovered from this event. Doing a little more research, this fragment is classified as an iron meteorite belonging to the 2AB group composed of nickel, iron, cobalt, and phosphorus. There's trace amounts of germanium and iridium, and there's some sulfur as well. In fact, this event was so much celebrated and remembered that the Russian government issued a stamp for the 10 year anniversary of this event. Okay, let's see what this guy weighs. 2.51 grams. Let's see how magnetic it is. Very. It's got a good grip on it. So this one has a lot of iron nickel in it. Okay, let's check continuity on this. Very conductive. Okay, just to prove that it is conductive and will work in a circuit, I just have a little battery here hooked up to an LED through a resistor, and we can test it right now. Okay, let's move on to the last sample. This is the Gold Basin Meteorite. It was discovered in 1995. That's the year I graduated high school. Wow. By a professor from the University of Arizona. So after this find, over 4,450 specimens were found. Total mass, uh, about 170,000 grams have been collected. 
and that was over a 225 square kilometer. So this fragment is composed of type L, crondite material. The parent meteorite had a kinetic energy equivalent up to 50 kilotons when it entered the Earth's atmosphere. And it fell approximately 15,000 years ago. Okay, let's check the weight. 3.61 grams. Okay, let's see how magnetic it is. Fairly magnetic. But easily picked off the magnet. Check continuity. Again, not getting anything on this one. Probably because it's ox heavily oxidized on the outside. So if anyone's interested in hunting for meteorites, I would suggest getting yourself a cheap metal detector. You could even get a stick with a strong magnet on it. First and foremost, do some research as to where to search and how to look for them. Always take care not to uh, trespass onto private land and onto reserves. And don't dig around in national parks and fill, fill your holes up when you're done digging them. I would recommend reading this book too, The Field Guide to Meteors and Meteorites. Uh, it'll give you a good idea on how to hunt down meteorites. It also goes over the composition of meteorites and their grouping classifications. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's uh, my few more samples added to my collection. Uh, I'm going to continue with this. Every year I'll get some more meteorites fragments that I find interesting and I'll uh, share some properties with you and um, let you know what's going on. A little update on me. I know I haven't been updating too much uh, as of late. Of course, it's been a crazy year for everybody. Uh, I decided to go back to school. So I'm uh, taking some mapping courses actually might assist me in um, trying to prospect new new uh, gold claims and mineral claims. So um, I'm looking forward to do that. My partner and I just purchased a new gold claim in uh, British Columbia. So we're looking forward to prospecting that this season. So there'll be some uh, content coming up on that for sure. Hopefully uh, all the restrictions are gone by then. So I hope you all stay safe out there. Try to hunker through this as best you can. If you wouldn't mind, please uh, hit the like and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you all soon. Take care, everyone. Alright, so like in the last video, I know you guys like seeing gold. So here's a gold nugget I have. I have it hooked up to the lead. And let's see how conductive it is. Just have to hit the touch. And very conductive.